hello guys in this video i'm going to teach you about oauth2 implementation here i'm going to use google as my oauth2 service provider but you can use any service provider all the tans concept will be same for all the service provider and also in this project i'm going to use react as my front end and golang as my back end but like i mentioned this is not very specific to frameworks but you can use any framework of your choice i will teach you the concepts and you can apply it anywhere in OAuth 2, we have two flows by which we can get access token from our OAuth 2 server. So the first one is implicit grant flow and the second one is authorization cloud flow. The implicit grant flow typically only includes a front end, but an authorization code flow is secure since it includes both front end and back end to get the access token. So without wasting any other time, let's jump into the overview of how each flow works. Let's first see how this implicit grant flow works. Firstly, from our front-end client application, we have to redirect to Google's login page. And from that page, we have to log in with our Gmail account or any valid Google account. Once that login is successful, Google will send us the access token to the callback URL. So the callback URL will always point to front-end. We will look in detail how this callback URL work later in this video. We can also set what are the resources that this access token can access from Google server using a concept called a scope. I will teach you what is scope in the later part of the video. Now let's see how this authorization code flow works. So in authorization code flow, the steps are similar to implicit grant flow. But instead of access token, you will get an code. Once we get the code on the front end, we have to share this code with our backend server and our backend server have to communicate with the OAuth service and get the access tokens if the code is valid. Once our server receives this token, we can share this token with the front end. This token exchange process should happen in your backend server because this token exchange process includes your client secret and you have to keep your client secret very secret. If you click that client secret on your front end it is very publicly accessible so we should always always keep this process on the back end in this token exchange process we receive three tokens as response from the google server one is id token access token and refresh token id token is a identification token of about a user so it contains metadata about the user access token is used to access the resources from google like accessing the user's drive data or accessing the user's fitness data, something like this. The drawback of this access token is that it has a very short time period. So we need, we have to refresh this to access token very frequently. And to help this process, we have refresh token. Usually this refresh token will have a very long validity and you, you can use this refresh token to get access token. This refresh token is also something that you should never share with your front end because this refresh token can generate unlimited access token for that particular user and only with the access token you can access Google resources so you should never share this refresh token to your front end. And also one more advantage of this refresh token is that you can get the access token without asking the user to re-log in into Google. So once you receive the refresh token, we have to safely store this token into our backend DB and only use this token on demand by the user. So ideally what we should do is that we should not share the access token and refresh token to our frontend. Instead, we have to save the refresh token into our DB and create a new JWT signed by our server and share this JWT to our frontend. So later when frontend want to get some data from the Google server, we have to send the JWT from the client to the server and from the server get the specific refresh token and get the access token from the refresh token and use this access token to access resources from Google. Getting an access token from the refresh token is very simple. You just have to simply call an endpoint provided by the OAuth service and pass this refresh token to that endpoint and you will get the access token as response. To get started, we have to log in into our Google Cloud Console and create a project for this application. So to do that, uh, go to Google Cloud Platform, click on the first link and uh, once you have signed in, click on the console button 
this will take you to the console page this page on the top left corner you will have an option like this click this new project and you can name this project anything i'll name this youtube click create it's getting created let's give it some time to get created okay once this is created you can either select the project from here or you have to click this and select it go to api and services go into your credentials this page it asks us to configure consent screen click configure we will be in this page don't select anything just click create and for the app name let's give demo app and for the email i'll give my email and you can upload your app logos here this will be displayed in these sections on you can configure other metadata about your app and we have to give uh, the developer info and see are in this page we have to add scope remember uh, i told that the access token can access only a certain resources of google right so here we have to define the scopes that this project can access so i am going to give access to the user email the user profile and the open id and click update you will see those here and scroll down click save and continue till our project will be in test mode you can switch between test and public mode uh, in the in, from this console but for now i'm going to add myself as a test user press enter and click add save and continue and uh, verify the information you have created and click back to dashboard on this oauth consent screen you have testing publish app if you click on publish app this will publish your app to production so all your uh, google users will be able to access your app i have created this app for testing so i will go back to testing and now go to credential section now this notification is no more there so click on create credentials oauth client id application type as web application and application name as uh, react client so for the javascript origins we have to provide local host okay this should be http colon double slash local host and also one more url with the actual port colon 5173 so i'm going to use wait for our application so i am using 5173 and for the authorized redirect urls this is going to be our front end so so for production application you should use your uh, domain name for this one and once you have configured everything click on create so once your app is created you will get this client id and client secret hit okay this is all the setup you have to do in your cloud console now let's create a react app let's create our react app using git i'm using npm here but you can also use npm let's give a project name and select react as framework and select typescript and swc cd into the folder use npm install or npm install to install the packages Once all the packages are installed successfully, let's open the app in VS Code. Once the app is loaded in VS Code, let's clean up the code that we don't need. Implement OAuth in React. We are going to use a package called React OAuth. Now let's install the package using npm command. Once the app is installed successfully, let's wrap the app with Google OAuth provider. Now let's pass the client ID into the client ID parameter. Now in our app component, let's use this use Google login hook and pass the on success parameter. It gives us back a login function which we can use to login into Google. Now create a button and call the login function when you click the button. Now let's also create a logout button and call the Google logout function which is from the Google OAuth package. This is all the configuration that we have to make for implicit grant flow. Now let's just start the app using pnpm run dev. 
in our page let's click on login with google and select your google account once it has logged in successfully open your console you should see your access token in your console for this authorization code flow i have moved the front end code into a folder called front end react now let's also create a folder called back end golang now let's cd into that folder and run go mod in it oauth app this will initialize a go app and create a go.mod file for that application now let's create a main.go file we are going to use jin as our web server so let's install using go get command once jin is installed open the main.go file in the main.go file mention the package as main and import all the necessary modules create a main function create a jin server and let's create a slash ping endpoint and then run the server this will run the server on port 8080 Now let's clear the terminal and run go run main.go to start our application. Now let's open postman and hit the api. We should receive pongress response. Let's go back to vs code and install all the required packages for this oauth implementation. Let's first install cross otherwise all our requests from the front end will receive a cross error. Then let's install go.env to read our env file and then we will install our oauth2 and oauth2 google packages for our oauth2 implementation and then finally let's install jwt package so that we can sign our own jwt from our golang server so these are all the required packages for this implementation now back in our main.go file let's make all the necessary imports and in our main function Let's use the cross and use cross dot default as the configuration. This will allow all origins by default. And let's create a init function. This will get called before the main function. And here, let's initialize our dot env file and then create a global variable for oauth two config. And it is of type oauth two dot config. Now let's initialize this oauth two dot config in this function and pass. the client id client secret redirect url and the scopes we want to access and the endpoints for google now back in our main function let's create a endpoint for google oauth callback and pass the google callback handler now let's define the google callback handler and get the code from the query parameters and pass this code to the exchange function in the google oauth config variable that we define globally this will give us back the tokens and an error now let's check for the error if there is an error let's send a status code of 400 which is bad request and the error message back to the client and return the response now let's create a utils.go file inside this utils.go file let's define the package as main and make all the necessary imports and let's create a function called get user info make sure you have the g capital this makes the function publicly accessible and now define the user info endpoint this is an endpoint provided by your oauth provider and by using this endpoint we can get the user details back now let's give a get request to this endpoint and get the user response back in the body now let's defer the body close and read the json body and get the user info back now let's make all the necessary imports for the jwt and let's define a function called sign jwt again s capital and in this function let's get the user info and create an object called as claim and inside this claim pass in all the data that you have to store in the jwt token and pass the exp parameter this will be the expiry time of the json web token now let's create the token from the claims and then sign this token using your secret key and then check for an error if there is an error return the error else you will have a signed jwt token now back in the google callback handler in the main.go file let's call this get user info and get the user info back let's handle the error and then get the signed token for this user info and then also handle this error and if everything is successful let's send this token back to the client 
Now let's make the front end changes for this authorization code flow. Firstly, we have to install Axios. Using Axios, we are going to request backend. So after installing Axios, open your app.tsx file. In your use Google login hook, pass auth code as flow and pass the on success parameter and let's console log the code response. Now let's import the Axios module and make a call to our backend server endpoint and also log the response from our server. Now that we have implemented all the code, let's start both the application. Now open the terminal, cd into the frontend folder and start your frontend application. And then open another terminal and go into a backend folder and start your backend server. Here I am using the command go run main.co and utils.co. This will start the server and port 8080. Now that we have started all our application, let's open Chrome and go into our frontend website and also open the network section in the debug console and let's click the login with google button in the login pop-up let's select the gmail account and click continue and we should get the token back from our server